Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. As a young Jewish believer in the Messiah, I came to know a woman that walked in one of the greatest miracle ministries I ever saw. Her name, Catherine Coleman. And she used to say, please don't grieve the Holy Spirit. He's all that I have. My next guest started a genuine friendship with the Holy Spirit at 13. He's 27 now. And he says the most important thing of the hour is for you to have a friendship with the Spirit of the living God, and he would like to help you develop this. I want this to you. Yeah. Oh. Now, I've been, really been looking forward to interviewing my guest, David Hernandez, uh, because of the relationship he has with the Holy Spirit. And everyone is supposed to have this type of a relationship. But your family was sabotaged generations ago uh, with uh, the occult. Right. And uh, how did they get free? Well, they got free when my grandparents were filled with the Holy Spirit. And my grandparents actually attended a church that looked down upon people who had the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So they get kicked out of their church and they go and find a church plant locally that was actually enabling them to move in those gifts. But it was since that moment that they were filled with the Holy Spirit that the things that the enemy had tried to do, because you know, even if you break something, he tries to get back in. The scripture talks right. about how demons return. And so in my family, those things would try to come back in even wait all the way down to me. On the other flip side of that is when my family's filled with the Holy Spirit, as is true of any believer, we experience the supernatural in our lives. And at 11, uh, you, you got born again, right. and you had an encounter in which the Lord showed you your future. Tell me about that. Well, when I was 11 years old, that's when I gave my heart to Jesus. And when I say I gave it to him, I truly do mean that I understood the ramifications of that commitment. And wholeheartedly, I said, Lord, I'm in, and I just want you. And when I did that, the Lord showed me that he would use me in ministry. He showed me not just the ministry, the type of ministry that I would be in, but the Lord also showed me, which, funny enough, the administrative, the back end, the different steps we would take logistically and practically. And that happened after I prayed, Lord, I read in James here where it says, if any of you lack wisdom, I was 11. And so, you know, I needed some wisdom if I was going to do it. Yeah, well, it says 75-year-old I know needs some wisdom. <laughs> so 11 years old, I say, Lord, I'm going to stand on this with childlike faith. I said, Lord, I believe that I can have that. And it was almost like I just knew the information, just a download. And even to this day, now I'm 27, been in the ministry officially since 13. But even to this day, we're still living out that plan that I received when I was 11. So I said, okay, Lord, after these next couple of steps, you're going to have to show me another download because we need to know the next step of the way. <laughs> Well, well, you know, um, at age 13, he starts preaching the gospel, and he has such a close intimacy with God, such a close intimacy with the Spirit of the living God, but then panics set in. Guess what happened? All of a sudden, that presence lifted. What did you think? At first, I thought, Lord, did I do something to offend you? Did I say something? Was I preaching something that wasn't necessarily scriptural? And so, as you can imagine, I became very fearful. I started panicking, like you said. I said, Lord, I was enjoying just this beautiful fellowship with you, and I, I felt it was this, there was this flow spiritually, and something just blocked it and disrupted that flow. And so I said, Lord, I have to understand what's happening here. And so I just pressed in further, and I determined within me, I said, Lord, 
There's got to be more. Because I know that I, I've walked with Jesus, but I feel like it's, it's, I'm missing something. And I'm looking back now, the Lord had withdrawn, not because of, you know, anything that I had done. And when I say he withdrew, he didn't do so literally. He did so in relation to my emotions. I learned that when God seemingly withdraws, he's not doing it to push you away. He's doing it to draw you closer. Now, did you literally lock yourself in the room and say, God, if you don't come here, I'm, I'm not going out? Did you really? I, I went in and I made that ultimatum. I said, Lord. Until I receive something fresh from heaven, I'm not leaving here. You need to touch me. And so I remember on my face was pressed into the carpet. The carpet became tear drenched. I was praying with so much um, passion that I remember even tensing my whole body and everything in me just hungered for the presence of Jesus. And I said, Lord, I can't leave this place until you touch me. I'm not leaving this place until something from heaven comes in here. And I remember I was just praying for several hours, about four hours in that moment. And then something amazing happened. And what had happened in that moment was looking back now what, what is called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, I didn't speak in tongues at that point, mm -hmm. but I received what I call a flood from within. You see, at salvation, you receive the Holy Spirit. Right. But at baptism, you release Him. You receive Him into the rest of your being. Jesus said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. So the scripture talks about that river being deep within. That flood touches from the Spirit, and it goes from the inside out. So that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you can receive Him, even though you, people ask, well, I already have the Holy Spirit. How do I receive Him a second time? You received Him in your spirit the first time when you got saved, but He overflows the rest of your being at baptism. They say, Lord, I want more of your presence. That's not the point. The point of baptism is not you getting more of God. It's Him getting more of you. And when He is released from deep within, He begins to overflow. And that's what happened. I, remember, I felt just this I felt like I was living in a little piece of heaven on earth in my room. The ordinary plain surroundings of my room changed dramatically. Not visually, but the sense of his presence was so strong. I remember I felt like this heat descend on my body, like currents of electricity moving up and down. I'm crying, I'm praying, I'm worshiping. And I closed my eyes. My eyes were closed at that time. And I said, I remember Jesus had become so real. The Holy Spirit had revealed him with such intensity that I thought that if I moved my hand, I might feel it brush up against his robe. I was frozen. I didn't want to move because I didn't want to disrupt what was happening. And that real experience was the well I still draw from today. But, but that sparked you to even more passionately have intimacy with God. You would spend hours and hours seeking God. Tell me about that. Well, I, I mean, even seeking out mentors and even seek, I mean, go to the conferences. I would read the books and I would spend my time in prayer, spend my time in the Word, so much so that when I would read the Word, uh, my Bible started falling apart. I heard of this old quote that says, a Bible that's falling apart usually belongs to a believer who isn't. And so I'm looking at this and I remember just reading it and when I read it, I wasn't, I'm, I'm younger, so that wasn't in my mind, oh, I want to preach a sermon or I want to get a, a revelation. It was simply, Jesus, I want to see another facet of who you are. And seeking the word, who is Jesus, as I read it from scripture, the Holy Spirit would take that word and bring it to life. And I, I sensed the drawing, I sensed the closeness. The more time I spent in it, the scripture describes that we're changed as we behold him. You know, there's not too much work to it, though we do work toward holiness and though we do, you know, enact disciplines that cause us to walk the way God wants us to walk. The truth is that there's not much you can do to transform yourself. But it was in the presence of Jesus that I received the transformation. Acts chapter 4 talks about how the Pharisees and the Sadducees knew that the disciples had been with Jesus because of the time they spent with him. And so the presence of God will transform you. And as you spend time looking and gazing into the lovely countenance of Christ, the majestic, beautiful countenance of the Son of the living God, you're looking in the scripture and you're being transformed as you're looking into the word. You're being changed into his image. You're becoming more like Jesus. For every moment you spend in his presence, you're becoming more like him. You're being transformed to be more like Jesus. And now, so speaking about being more like him, he starts going to school and this fountain of God's presence starts coming out of him on all of the students. When we come back, I want to find out what happened at school. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. 
Call now and get David Diga Hernandez's powerful brand new book, Carriers of the Glory, Becoming a Friend of the Holy Spirit, plus his four-part audio CD teaching, Discover Your Identity as a Carrier of God's Glory. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9403. David Diga Hernandez's powerful brand new book, Carriers of the Glory, will acquaint you with the mysterious third person of the Holy Trinity. You will understand the Holy Spirit's purpose and nature. Learn how to avoid Avoid the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which is an unpardonable sin. Begin to operate in the spiritual gifts. Learn how to draw closer to the Holy Spirit. Become a carrier of God's Spirit and experience the supernatural power of God in your life. You will also receive this four-part audio CD teaching, Discover Your Identity as a Carrier of God's Glory. Through this power-packed teaching series, you will learn five simple keys that you can activate immediately to become a close friend of the Holy Spirit. Enter into four realms of prayer that will help you receive divine favor, provision, healing, and protection. Receive the answers to the most asked questions concerning how to walk in God's glory and obtain His supernatural power and authority. David includes eight anointed prayers that will help you experience the presence of the Holy Spirit right away. He is going to make Jesus more real to you than ever in your life. Get ready to burn with God's glory and supernatural power. Don't miss out on getting David Diga Hernandez's powerful brand new book, Carriers of the Glory, Becoming a Friend of the Holy Spirit, plus his four-part audio CD teaching, Discover Your Identity as a Carrier of God's Glory. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9403. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9403 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. So, so David, uh, you, you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but in other words, you, you just didn't manifest speaking in tongues. But one day, you go up to the altar, and what happened? So I'm at the altar. This evangelist had come to our church. He's praying, and he talked about this gift of speaking in tongues. Now I understand that that's the flood overflowing and touching the mouth. And I said, Lord, I want that gift because I know that if I can operate in that gift, I can more clearly hear your voice. I can be drawn close to you. It'll advance the prayer life. Of course. And you know how they do rows behind the different prayer people? And, and so we had two rows. I'm in behind one very tall gentleman who had a sleeve that was hanging off of his elbow. And he's so tall that when he's rocking back and forth, every time he rocks back, his sleeve keeps tapping me on the forehead. <laughs> it's and pretty so, annoying. It was very annoying. But I, so I, I'm praying, and I, I remember I just kept feeling his sleeve touching my forehead. But I was so hungry for the presence of God that I said, I'm not going to move because I want the evangelist to lay hands on me. So I'm, I'm standing there and I'm, I'm, my hands are lifted and I'm saying, okay, Lord, I'm ready to receive all that you have for me. I'll surrender to the gift once I receive it. And the evangelist, I didn't know at that moment, was laying hands on the tall man who kept annoying me with the sleeve. And so when the evangelist touches that man, this time when the sleeve came back and hit me, I felt a jolt of electricity shoot through my body. So it moved through the pastor, through that man, through his annoying sleeve, and it touched me on the head, and I felt it. And I remember it's like something just broke loose, and I start praying in the Holy Ghost. I mean, and I was praying loud in the Holy Ghost. People were like looking at me, and I, I was surprised that I was praying in the Holy Spirit with, with that much passion. And I was like, this is it. This is what I've been praying for. And that led to several other things in the ministry. Well, tell me about what goes on with someone your age that is so passionate about God, so filled with the Spirit of God, so yielded to the Holy Spirit. Uh, tell me what was going on with you in school. Well, as you know, all true ministries are birthed out of a love for Jesus cultivated in the secret places of prayer. Private prayer is always revealed in public power. And there was an overflow that started to happen and I got excited. You know, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you don't have to try to work yourself up to evangelize or work yourself up to worship. Everything in you has to do to subdue it. You're saying, okay, I might be getting a little carried away with this because it's so natural. And the Holy Spirit's friendship, because I started spending time with Him, everywhere I go now, I'm aware of the fact that He's with me, even at school. And so I'd start telling people about Jesus. And it got to the point where 
At lunch, kids would start to come to just hear about Jesus. And I would start praying with them. We saw people get healed of psoriasis. We saw people take off their glasses, able to be healed and, and see. We saw people with broken bones be healed, swollen ankles. It would go down right in front of everybody. And we would, just, would they mock you at all? There was one, yes, especially who I remember would mock us. And, and, and one of the things that would manifest in that place is as people would come to that group, there were a couple times where people didn't know what they were walking into. They just kind of saw people gathered. And as they would approach, yeah, the glory Lord. was so yeah. manifested on the place where we were praying that kids would have trouble standing as they approached the prayer place and not even know why. And so I had one guy, he had his arms folded. He's watching. I'm talking to somebody. I'm saying, okay, we're going to believe God and we're going to believe for your healing. I said, repeat after me and I'm praying. As I'm praying for him, I hear him behind me saying, oh, this is fake. Oh, he's using you know, psych psychology or oh, he's using power of suggestion. And I wasn't angry. I wanted to try to explain that this was the real deal. This was the power of God. So I turn, I, I remember I had my, held my hand out like this. I turn to go tell him about what God was doing. And the moment I turn to talk to him, he goes out under the power. <laughs> And he gets up, and this was so funny, he gets up, he goes, I don't believe that, I don't believe that, I don't believe that. I said, it just happened to you, what do you mean you don't believe that? So the glory of God hit him, and he, a couple, I mean, I think it was just a matter of months later, he's at our church now, at the altar, praying, weeping, giving his heart to Jesus. And it was because of the glory of God, it was because of that friendship that overflowed and manifested into everyday life. David, you're a forerunner. What you just heard David say, it's going to happen in schools all over the world. It's going to happen in colleges all over the world. I'm telling you, we're about ready to see such an explosion of the Holy Spirit. Use the term glory. What does the word glory mean to you? And explain that a little. Well, the glory is the full weight of the person of Jesus. You know, John chapter 1, verse 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jump down to verse 14, and it describes that he was, he was the glory of God. He was full of grace and truth. And Jesus is the person, we, we, we use terms sometimes, and I know I used to think this way, and the Lord helped me with it. We use terms like glory and, you know, the Holy Spirit. And in our minds, we imagine it to be some type of esoteric force or some type of um, power or substance, when in reality, it is the very person. So when I talk about the glory, I'm talking about walking in an awareness. And you can walk in an awareness 24-7. This isn't just for me. This isn't just for Sid Roth. This is for everybody. This is the way the early church did it, where they walked in an awareness of Jesus to where he was able to touch people any time of any day because they were surrendered and yielding to his voice because of that awareness. I like to say that the only distance that can exist between the believer and the Holy Spirit is their unawareness of his presence. It's only because we're unaware of what God is doing that we aren't able to participate participate in it. Often people will say, oh, we prayed and we worship and the glory of God came down. It's not that the glory of God comes down. It's that we become aware of the glory that is already there. And when we walk in that glory, when we walk in that awareness of the glory of God 24 seven, what begins to happen is we begin to see opportunities that would have otherwise been missed because we think of a mentality where God is far from us. The scripture says he's not far from any of us. He's near to us. He's just a whisper away. And if you feel like you've fallen away from that, as far as you think you've run, a single moment of repentance can cover that entire distance and bring you all the way back home. And because he's the one who's interested in con con connecting with us. So there are people watching us right now. You're watching us and you feel very distant from God. There is no one like our God. No one. There is nothing impossible. There's no one that has gotten too far away from God. I want you to lead someone to Jesus that's watching right now. Would you do that? Yeah. So in this moment now, say, dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. I come before you now. I come before you now. And I put my trust in you. And I put my trust in you. I turn from this world. I turn from this world. And I turn to you. And I turn to you. Forgive me. Forgive me. Save me. Save me. I believe. I believe. You are the Son of God. You are the Son of God. I believe. I believe. You rose from the dead. You rose from the dead. And I believe. I believe. That you're saving me now. That you're saving me now. In Jesus' name. Now, I want to pray Jesus for name. you to receive the bat. All you have to do, just right where you are, just lift your hands and receive all that God has. So Father, you said that if we would ask, we would receive. And you being a good father, Lord, if we ask for a bread, you're not going to give us a stone. So Father, I pray in Jesus' name that Jesus the baptizer would pour out his Holy Spirit on that one who is receiving it now. For that one watching who's saying, I want that. Lord, I pray for an infilling with power right now in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Now you may say, I didn't feel anything. Some of you did feel something. But whether or not you felt something is not the issue. The issue is that God keeps his promises. And if you asked for the Holy Spirit and you trusted that God would give it to you, no matter what you felt, if you did praise God, if you didn't, I want to encourage you, you received it. Just allow that river to flow from in to out. I know something. I know when we come back, there are going to be words of knowledge released. I know there's going to be major healings. Don't go away. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. If you love watching our It's Supernatural TV program, you can now watch hundreds of archive programs online, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, on your computer, your smartphone, your iPad, or your favorite tablet. ISN will be the vehicle to equip you to being normal. Normal as defined by the Bible. Just log on to SidRoth.org forward slash ISN. We now return to It's Supernatural. And you know what I, I think is so amazing? Uh, you talk about Peter's shadow. I believe that when you pray for people, the shadow or the glory of God falls on them. And the same thing that people were healed under Peter's shadow. Tell me about what you see in Peter's shadow. Well, what I saw when I was reading that scripture about Peter's shadow is I noticed that the Bible doesn't actually say that the people were healed because of Peter's shadow. The Bible says that people brought their sick that his shadow might fall upon them. In other words, the people had it in their minds that if his shadow can just touch them, they can be healed. And I thought, what would give rise to such a belief, to such an odd belief that a shadow could heal someone? Well, it wasn't that Peter's shadow was healing anyone. It's that the healing presence of Jesus was so heavy upon his life that everywhere he walked, miracles happened by him just being there. And I believe believers can step into that. That was one of the things I prayed for about the gift of healing was, was that gift. But I, then I realized that there's the gift that God places on certain individuals, as we talk about in 1 Corinthians 12. But then, according to Mark 16, every believer is to flow in this operation. And every believer is to walk in the healing presence of Jesus. And when the healing presence of Jesus comes on a life, you're going to see miracles. And there's not going to be really so much effort that you have to put into it. You just have to believe. I, I'm going to start right now. God has told me several times there are people with pain in your neck. If you'll move your head, if you have pain, you'll see that that pain is gone and backs are being healed right now. Anything wrong with your back, I would like you to pray as the Holy Spirit directs right now. So I want to pray. If you're believing for a miracle, I believe that the Holy Spirit could make Jesus the healer more real than anything you've ever experienced. And that's really the key. When the Holy Spirit takes a revelation from the Word and causes it to become something that becomes a reality for you, everything changes. He's going to cause Jesus to become so real to you right now, right where you're watching this, wherever you're watching this, your whole atmosphere is about to shift. And when Jesus becomes more real than your sickness, you're going to notice that your sickness goes. So let's believe God for, first of all, the presence. You know, that's a very different way of praying, I want to tell you. But I love it. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm going to pray right now that the healing presence of Jesus would fill that room where you are. So precious Lord, we know you are faithful to your word. And we know that it is by the Holy Spirit that you establish your dominion. So in the name, there's somebody watching me right now. There's the skin disorder has just been healed. It, it, you, you noticed uh, uh, there was, there's been a, a skin disorder all up your left arm, like a rash of some sort. If you'll look now, you're going to notice that the rash or, or uh, psoriasis is completely gone. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you for that. Jesus, we give you the glory. Come on, let's believe and pray right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for your Holy Spirit's presence now flowing. Lord, I rebuke sickness right now in Jesus' name. I rebuke heart disease in Jesus' name. Lord, we come against arthritis in Jesus' name. I rebuke cancer right now in the name of the living God. In the name of Jesus, we come against and we break the back of the enemy right now and we destroy the works of the devil. And Father, I pray that that atmosphere of faith would be electrified right where they are in Jesus' name. Lord, let your presence become so intense, so real, that they not only get a sense of you, but that it be done in their body in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I pray that you cultivate friendship with the Holy Spirit. 
The Holy Spirit's purpose is to make Jesus so real, as David prayed, that the reality of Jesus is stronger than any problem in your life. I pray in Jesus' name you become a friend of the Holy Spirit. Do you desire to know God in a deeper and more intimate way? Do you want your soul to be set ablaze with passionate love for Him? Do you want to walk in the fullness of all that He has created for you? Are you ready to receive your breakthrough, your miracle, your healing? David Hernandez wants to help you burn with God's glory and supernatural power. Call now and get David Diga Hernandez's powerful brand new book, Carriers of the Glory, Becoming a Friend of the Holy Spirit, plus his four-part audio CD teaching, Discover Your Identity identity as a carrier of God's glory. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9403. David Diga Hernandez's powerful brand new book, Carriers of the Glory, will acquaint you with the mysterious third person of the Holy Trinity. You will understand the Holy Spirit's purpose and nature. Learn how to avoid the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, which is an unpardonable sin. Begin to operate in the spiritual gifts. Learn how to draw closer to the Holy Spirit. Become a carrier of God's Spirit and experience the supernatural power of God in your life. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, the presence of God becomes one with you. And everywhere you go, you become an atmosphere of heaven. When you walk into rooms, the atmosphere changes. When you walk in, sickness goes out. When you come in, demons go out. And when you pray, you shake heaven and earth. You will also receive this four-part audio CD teaching, Discover Your Identity as a Carrier of God's Glory. Through this power-packed teaching series, you will learn five simple keys that you can activate immediately to become a close friend of the Holy Spirit. Enter into four realms of prayer that will help you receive divine favor, provision, healing, and protection. Receive the answers to the most asked questions concerning how to walk in God's glory and obtain His supernatural power and authority. David includes eight anointed prayers that will help you experience the presence of the Holy Spirit right away. David is going to pray all the facets of glory and the Holy Spirit upon you. I can't wait for you to be normal. Normal is defined by the Bible. God wants your friendship and the Holy Spirit is going to be such a friend that he's going, I like David's word, vivify. He is going to make Jesus more real to you than ever in your life. Get ready to burn with God's glory and supernatural power. Don't miss out on getting David Diga Hernandez's powerful brand new book, Carriers of the Glory, Becoming a Friend of the Holy Spirit, plus his four-part audio CD teaching, Discover Your Identity as a Carrier of God's Glory. Yours for a donation of $39. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9403. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9403 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Next week on It's Supernatural. My guest had cancer three times. He went to Oral Roberts. Oral prayed for him. His cancer went away, but he got something new, the supernatural gift of faith, and he wants to impart that to you. Anyone want it? Yeah.